and this is Mr. Buffington. We're going to be solving irrational square roots. So we'll be finding exact and approximate values for square roots that um, don't necessarily give us nice even numbers. Let's go ahead and take a look at our list. When you're working with square roots, you really need to have these numbers memorized. So the perfect squares are the numbers in green. 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, 121, and 144. Those are perfect squares up to 12 times 12, and they're really good numbers to have memorized. Another good list is that those same perfect squares are also multiples of the negatives, so negative 1 times negative 1. In other words, the perfect square um, 1, for example, has square roots of both positive and negative 1. All right, here's the rule of radicals, or in other words, a rule of square roots. If you have something underneath um, a square root symbol like AB, for example, you can separate that with multiplication of being the square root of A times the square root of B. The reason why this is important is because, as you see in this example, 24 can be split up to being 4 times 6, or the square root of 4 times the square root of 6. I'll show you in a minute why that's important, but we need to understand that you can separate numbers using multiplication that come from underneath a square root symbol. Now, the reason this is important, um, or why this matters at all, is because that 24 that turned into 4 times 6, we can now simplify the square root of 4 to being 2. Right? It's, it's technically plus or minus 2, but for are the purposes of this lesson, we're going to just be writing the numbers. But the square root of 4 is 2, and then that square root of 6 would remain. So this, 2 times the square root of 6, is the simplified radical. So this irrational square root of 6 is an irrational square root. It means it can't be written as a nice um, fraction or repeating decimal. Um, it's basically a weird, if you take the square root of 6, you'll get some kind of crazy not really repeating decimal. Right, it's an irrational number. But we can simplify it, at least part of it. And that's what we do when we're simplifying square roots. So, First, is it a perfect square? Remember that list from before? You need to use that list. If it's a perfect square, just solve it. Does it have a perfect square factor? All right, that's the second question that you're asking. So if it has a factor that's on that list of perfect squares, then we can simplify all that we possibly can. Let's look at an example. Here's um, 72. I'm going to look at that. Is that a perfect square? Well, I've got my list here, all the way up to 15 times 15. So I can look real quick. 72 would be between 64 and 81. Nope. So there's no, it's not a perfect square. 72 is not a perfect square. But what I can do is look for some factors of 72 that are perfect squares. So it has some square root factors. The largest perfect square factor is 36. 72 is equal to 36 times 2. So I can change that to be writing it as 30, the square root of 36 times the square root of 2. And the square root of 36 is 6. So if we wanted to factor this square root, radical, irrational square root, whatever you want to call it, we want to factor it down, this is the simplest form. And that is the exact value. The square root of 72 is exactly equal to 6 times the square root of 2. Now, if we were measuring and you needed to make a line that was a square root of 72 inches long or something like that, um, having it in this exact form is not much help. So we sometimes approximate numbers as well. And a great tool for this is your calculator. Okay, because I mean you can calculate square roots, but they take a long time. So you definitely want to have your calculator. And you can do the 6 times the square root of 2 or you can just do the square root of 72, and you'll get an approximate value, 8.49, approximately. You can also estimate, without having to do any of this math, just by looking at the perfect squares down here on the right-hand side. So I look at the beginning, square root of 72. Where does that fall? It falls between the square root of 64 and the square root of 81. Okay? It falls right in there. 
So if the square root of 72, 72 is between those numbers, the square root of 72 would be between the square roots of those numbers. This one here is 8 squared. And this one here is 9 squared. So our answer is going to fall somewhere between 8 and 9. Okay? And that's how we can estimate without having to really do all of this math. All right? That's a very approximate estimation. Somewhere in between 64 and 81, so it's somewhere between 8 and 9. This is definitely more accurate. But if you're looking for approximate estimations, that's a pretty good tool. All right. Now we're going to practice finding perfect squares. So at this point, you'll pause the video and try and find perfect square factors of these six square roots that we have here. All right. After you've practiced, hopefully you were able to use our list over here to find some perfect square factors. Um, 32 is 16 times 2. 16 is our perfect square factor of 32. 20 is 4 times 5. All right, 4 is our perfect square factor. 36 is actually an interesting one because 36 is a perfect square, so we could have solved it that way. But it's also a perfect square times a perfect square, 4 times 9. So we've got some perfect square factors, and it's a perfect square itself. All right, 41, the square root of 41 has no perfect square factors. All right, square root of 75 has a factor of 25 times 3, and then 98 is 49 times 2. So that's how we would find these in their square factors, we finding our perfect square factors. We can simplify them one step further by, again, taking the square root of 16 and making that into 4. The square root of 4 was 2. The square root of 36 was 6. Then this is how we would simplify all those answers. Okay? If you were able to do that, then you should feel pretty confident about simplifying um, radicals. You should feel pretty good about it. All right? So now let's practice just the one other thing. Um, these are the approximate numbers, by the way, in case you just plugged them into your calculator. These are the ones that you would get as approximate answers, just um, again for a reference. I'll show you that in just a minute again. But if we were estimating them, I've taken them and listed them in order from least to greatest. If we were estimating them without using a calculator, I would look at 20 and say, well, 20 is between 16 and 25. So the square root of 20 would be between 4 and 5. The square root of 4, square root of 5. Okay? Or the square root of 16, square root of 25. All right? 32 falls between 25 and 36. So that square root of 32 is going to fall between the square root of 25, which is 5, and the square root of 36, which is 6. All right? Just put some arrows up there just to show you our approximate um, guesses on those numbers. All right, square root of 98 is really close to 100. All right, and then again, just a quick reference. Here are the decimals, the actual pretty close decimals for these numbers, and then where we estimated they would fall anyway. T square root of 20 is again between 4 and 5. Square root of 32 is between 5 and 6. Square root of 36 is 6. That is right there. Um, square root of 41, we go in between those two, between 6 and 7 and then between 8 and 9 for that one, and just about right at the level of 10. All right, so that's how we estimate square roots. All right, and one more time, just want to show you this list. You've seen it over and over and over. It's a really important list for you to have memorized. It'll help with all the square root type problems that you do. Definitely have it memorized up to 12, perhaps up to 15. It's not, it's not a waste of time to memorize it a little bit farther. All right, have a great day.